Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm in Chubu Center International Airport and I'm going to be flying to Fukuoka using Ibex Airlines. Now I'm excited because this is the first time I I'm going to fly this airline and all I really know about it is that it's based in Sendai, about 300 kilometers north of Japan and they fly exclusively the CRJs. So it's always great to try a new airline and flying a CRJ is always great as well, I guess. Uh, so I think it's going to be a fantastic experience. So come along as you go from A to B. My day started by taking the train to Chubu Center International Airport or NGO, one of four island airports in Japan and the one located in Ise Bay near Nagoya. The airport itself is worth a stop in its own for any aviation enthusiast, as it's home to the first Dreamliner, ZA001, in the Flight of Dreams exhibition. The exhibition is really well done with shops and restaurants in a Seattle Pacific motif. It's also one of several airports which the Dreamlifter flies to, and luckily for me, there was one sitting idly at the airport today. Back inside on this sticky, soggy day, I made my way to the check-in kiosks. Ibex flies out of Terminal 1 and ANA facilitates the check-in and ground services for Ibex. Furthermore, all Ibex Airlines flights are co-chaired with ANA and more on that in a bit. Back to checking in, when possible, I always like to double check the seating layout. AC was unoccupied, so I was content with my original selection. So I just checked in and to check in with Ibex you just use the uh, ANA counter. Um, so it was pretty smooth. Uh, I clicked on English and uh, I guess when I entered my, my information um, it switched to Japanese. So after four years it was enough to get through. There was someone there to help you but I um, got my ticket. Flight's at 2.30 and uh, yeah that's all I have to do so just have to wait around for a little bit. Though Chubu Airport has much to see and do, there isn't terribly a lot going on gate side, so I quickly made my way to the end, gate 2. There's our CRJ hanging out down there. It's super flat and no trees. It, it kind of looks like a western prairie airport, doesn't it? With a small aircraft, I continued my, what appeared to be never-ending, pilgrimage down to the aircraft. Greeted with a cheerful welcome, I quickly made my way to my seat. Now, the CRJ is relatively small, but you know, let's do it. Let's bring in Sasquatch for the scouting report. Take it away. Hey, thanks for having me. Let's get to that scouting report. Ibex Airlines' entire fleet consists of 10 of these CRJ-700 next-gen aircraft. Consisting of a single class layout, the 70 seats are distributed over 18 rows. Located in the rear of the aircraft is one of the laboratories and the emergency exit is row 15 so seats in row 14 won't recline. And that's about does it for this little regional jet. Hey, you guys have a good one. See you later. Ibex is an airline which currently serves a handful of domestic destinations. Interestingly enough, Tokyo is not one of them. Prior to the pandemic, they used to fly to Narita for connecting passengers to international flights. However, that service has since been suspended. Our flight in Western Japan is going to take us more or less due west while dodging the less than ideal weather along the way. The cabin in the aircraft is fairly simple with its off-weight interior and grey seat design. The overhead compartment is what you expect for a regional jet 
Not super large, but big enough for my 30 liter backpack and large enough for what a regional passenger may tow with them. I thought the recessed ovals around the windows provided a nice, at least perception, of a larger window in the CRJ. The seats themselves are simple and more narrow than what can be found on a wide-body aircraft. Though for being a smaller jet, I consider the lake space quite generous, certainly more than what the ultra-low cost carriers provide. And the seat back pocket is sufficient for all my odds and ends. The seat back table is standard and can be adjusted to fit your preference. There is no in-flight entertainment besides a magazine which was offered early in the flight, nor Wi-Fi, nor electrical or USB outlet. But if you have access to Wi-Fi, then why not head over to my Twitter page where I post aviation and train related content. Of course, even during rainy season, you have mother nature to keep you occupied. The cloud coverage on this flight is some of the most fascinating which I've seen in a long time. The flight is long enough so that the drink service didn't feel rushed. Ibex provides a quick and simple service offering apple juice or green tea at this time. With no coffee option, I opted for the latter. The lavatory on these CRJs are without a doubt a tight fit, but it was clean and tidy. I made my way back to my seat. Being the only goofball with a camera on board, one of the cabin attendants came over and kindly chatted for a few minutes and offered some free swag. I always enjoy having the opportunity to engage with the staff. The last few years have been tough for those in the aviation industry, so I really appreciate and value the hard work they do. Now, if you want to book a flight, there is a couple things to take note. Ibex has an English site. But the booking page is very simple, maybe a bit too simple. Honestly, I recommend to just use the Japanese site and work your way through with the Google Translate. It offers all the options you expect when booking a ticket. And as mentioned earlier, Ibex is code shared with a a so you can always book through their site and earn Starline's miles. Back on board, being a domestic, flight, uh, all the announcements were in Japanese, so there wasn't any English uh, announcements to go with them, so just take note of that if you plan to fly with this airline. Happily, as we left Honshu and start to fly over Kyushu, the clouds at least appeared to break a bit, providing some views of the island below. Furthermore, we were treated with a nice view of Fukuoka as we circled around the city before landing in the southerly direction. The price for this 90 minute flight came to 7,200 yen. Now, since you can take a Shinkansen between these two cities, this comes out to 40% of a Shinkansen non reserve ticket. Back on the ground, we were greeted with a bus at our remote gate to bring us to the terminal. How's that for a little regional flight? So that was a great little seat. Uh, I was surprised with the leg room. I thought there would be a, a couple inches less of leg space. So I was really happy with uh, the space that's provided. And uh, that was a nice flight. The crew was fantastic. Uh, one came up to me and we had a chat for, for about five minutes and she gave me a couple postcards, which was uh, welcomed. I, I really enjoyed that. So uh, yeah, it was a great flight. And I think I, I would probably even fly them more if, if they flew to Tokyo. They, they don't fly to Tokyo. so. Uh, but that's the way it goes, that's alright. Let me know what you thought about Ibex Airlines. Uh, would you fly them? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys around next time.